As all of you know, a series of discussions led to the production of a report focusing on a vision for San Antonio's growth and development. It provides the overall direction San Antonio should follow in order to become a great and wonderful city. That report was released at a major meeting at this campus a few weeks ago. At the meeting, the mayor indicated that the hard work, the actual planning, followed by the implementation of the resulting plans was really just beginning. Today is part of that hard work, so welcome to that. As you know, SA 2020 identified 11 major areas on which to focus. Today's discussions will focus on one major vision area identified there, and that is government accountability and civic engagement. That theme is particularly relevant to the Department of Public Administration and the College of Public Policy, and I'm very pleased to see that the college that rather that, see that the college is taking a leadership role in discussions related to that theme. Again, UTSA's downtown campus is proud to provide the facilities, and I thank the College of Public Policy's Francine Romero, if you'll raise your hand, Francine, not everybody knows you, there she is, um, and all those involved in pre making preparations for today's events. And in addition to Francine, who's the uh, Associate Dean for the College of Public Policy, we do have Dennis Haynes, uh, the, the interim dean of the College of Public Policy, um, John Frederick, the provost of UTSA. Uh, we're very fortunate to have him here today as well. Um, we wanted to be sure to thank Joe Rubio and his people, the facilities people, who at the last minute uh, uh, had to do some, some planning and, and some, some movement and so forth, and we thank all of them. Um, it is also now my pleasure to introduce um, our, our first speaker, um, Ivy uh, Taylor, Councilwoman Ivy Taylor, uh, who has a bachelor's degree from Yale, a master's degree in city planning from uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She has six years of experience as an employee for the city of San Antonio, five years working at, the, at Merced Housing, a nonprofit organization. She served on the city's Urban Renewal Commission and Planning Commission. She has served two years as a council member for District 2. During that period, she has displayed a passion for improving our city and, of course, explains one reason why she's here. Uh, Ms. Taylor, I'm proud to say, is also a full-time lecturer for the Department of Public Administration here at the downtown campus. So, Councilwoman, would you please... Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Dr. Zapata. Well, welcome. And thank you so much for getting up early to help us kick off this community dialogue. It's so exciting to see such a, a huge crowd here. Um, this is a, an issue of tremendous importance. As Dr. Zapata mentioned, for the last several years, UTSA's College of Public Policy has sponsored the Great Cities Dialogue, which is an annual gathering of leading academic ex experts, civic leaders, and policymakers to discuss key topics that influence San Antonio's growth and development into a great city. Some of the, a couple of the topics that we've covered in the last few years, and some of you may have been at some of the previous dialogues, some of the topics included natural resource conservation and how uh, cities in general can position themselves as vibrant centers of commerce and community in the 21st century. But last year's Great Cities Dialogue actually set the stage for our event here today. In April of 2010, Camilla Stivers, which, who is the Distinguished Professor Emerita of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University, she was our guest lecturer, and she spoke to us on the topic, Great Cities in Dark Times. Let me just share a quote from Dr. Stivers. The greatness of great cities comes from an engaged public. If people don't trust city governments, if they feel that government is them instead of us, then no amount of economic development or business-like management is going to make a city great. People in government can create opportunities for citizens to get information, express their opinions, and talk to each other about the important issues facing the city." End quote. 
And so that brings us to this day here in 2011, not long after our mayor initiated a visioning process called SA 2020 that gave us the opportunity to dialogue as a community about where we want to be in the year 2020. So if you haven't uh, gotten a copy of the report from uh, the series of meetings, please contact the mayor's office so that you can pick up a copy. And also the information is listed on the city's website as well, a synopsis of the report. The initial uh, meetings that we had under the SA uh, 2020 umbrella identified government accountability and civic engagement as an area where we want to make progress in San Antonio. So we at the UTSA College of Public Policy thought our 2011 Great Cities Dialogue would be a wonderful venue to continue hashing out ideas on this theme. Now, I have to confess that I have a, a little fear. By virtue of the fact that you're here on Friday morning before 9 a.m., I'm a little fearful of the preaching to the choir syndrome, okay? <laughs> so we're here to talk about how we can engage more citizens, but I'm guessing that many of you in the room already participate in many ways. But today is only a continuation of a conversation on this topic, and we intend for there to be more opportunities to recruit additional folks to participate in this community conversation. So I hope everyone here in the room can help us to do that through talking to people in your own sphere of influence. As Dr. Romero will describe for you later, SA 2020 gave us some ideas of areas to focus on in relation to our vision for government accountability and civic engagement. Those areas are outlined in the SA 2020 report and you got a, um, a one pager on that as you walked into the auditorium today. Uh, some of the areas included in the report include voter turnout, uh, diversity and effectiveness of city boards and commission, and public service volunteerism. But we want you to think outside the box today. We're not just limited by the ideas that were generated through the SA 2020 dialogue. We will definitely discuss those ideas, but we want you to know that we're open to additional ideas as well. We have some background information to assist in the brainstorming, but today is not about academics talking at you about this topic, but instead we'll be relying on your expertise to help us map out our next steps to improve government accountability and to increase the number of citizens engaged so that San Antonio will continue to be recognized by all as a great city. And so now I will turn the program over to Dr. Francine Romero, Associate Dean of the College of Public Policy. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I don't know what my favorite thing was about yesterday. Was it when we lost all computing and telephone capacity at 1.30 and didn't get it back again for the whole day? or uh, when the mayor's office called me at 5.30 and told me to sit down because they had some more guests on the list to tell me about, which we didn't know about until late yesterday, or when the fire marshal said, you're planning on putting how many people in that room? <laughs> so it was a fun day, uh, but we're so glad you're all here today. We are so glad we are at capacity. Um, what we wanted to start by doing today we had the, the, the fortune of having a political science conference in town at the same time, and there are some great people in town who work on community engagement, civic accountability issues, government accountability, civic engagement issues in other cities, and we've asked them to just say a few words to you today, some of what they do in their own work, maybe some words of inspiration, and I just see our mayor has arrived. <laughs> Um, I, I would like to, Mayor Custer, do you, are you in a big rush? Do you, okay, all right. <laughs> Hate to do this from the stage. Um, uh, I'd like to first introduce Dr. Susan Mason. Um, if you want to come on up, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Susan. I'm going to need my glasses for this one. Um, Susan is an associate professor at Boise State University in the departments of public policy administration and political science. 
Uh, she has a PhD in political science from the University of Missouri at St. Louis, and she has bachelor's degrees in economics and psychology. And she has done some recent work on the connection between the design of cities and civic engagement. So please welcome Dr. Susan Mason. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. This is actually my first um, time I've been in Texas, and so you have a beautiful city. I um, really do not have any prepared remarks. When I spoke with Francine and she invited me today, she said, just tell them about things that you've been impressed by that you thought um, helped engage communities. And so I, I looked at some of the things that we were doing in Boise. And one of the things that we do is we have neighborhood associations. And I was fortunate enough this morning to be sitting at a table with people who are actually members of neighborhood associations. But our neighborhood associations are developed and designed by um, per people in those neighborhoods. And they bring um, a map to the city and they say, this is the geography of where we think is our neighborhood. And then the city looks and makes sure the geography they think is their neighborhood doesn't overlap with another neighborhood's belief of what their geography is. And so as long as the boundaries are clean, they can establish that as a neighborhood. The benefit they get of um, having established a neighborhood association is, well, I should say, they, they must also have bylaws of how they're going to have uh, determine who their leadership will be. And they have to have a public meeting at least once a year. And most of them have one, perhaps as often as once a month. But some of the benefits is, once you have a neighborhood association, you can apply for a $10,000 grant once a year for your community. And that means that you could use it to do a beautification in some particular area or help fund completing a sidewalk path on a particular street. And so you can decide how you want to use those funds um, if they're awarded to you, but you can't get them without being organized. Um, additionally, the uh, neighborhood association leaders always find out whatever is going on in their neighborhood. So if a new development is going in or if they're going to be um, paving streets or closing streets, that neighborhood association leader is notified. If there's something that will be present at a public hearing that might affect any part of that neighborhood, that neighborhood association leader is notified so they can be here, be there for sure to um, hear what the issue is. So that is, is a really nice um, way that the city um, council and the city itself can stay connected with its residents. Um, and that was one, one example. And another one is um, when we have candidates running for our city council or, or any municipal office, we offer at our university a candidates form. And it gives these candidates an idea um, to know about the state and the region and the city that they're going to be leading. So they get some basic information half day. And I attended one of these the very first year I moved to Boise. And I went around asking people why they decided to run. What was their motivation? And it really fell into two categories. Either there was something they were passionate about, might it be water rights or something going on in their neighborhood. Or secondly, they said, well, someone asked me to run. They thought I would be good at it. So that's another way to get people involved is to ask them. And so I guess those are just some ideas that I thought I would share with you today. And I'm really, really pleased um, and want to commend you on uh, being here. This is an impressive group of people. I thought there would be 40 people here today. <laughs> so have a wonderful visioning opportunity. Thank you.